Don't forget our KSAT Community Share the Shoes campaign is going on right now. You can donate a new pair of shoes or socks to a child in need. Just take your donation to any San Antonio Police substation through December 16th. This donation drive benefits Zapatos, which works with schools to help kids get the shoes they need. You can find more information on the KSAT community page at KSAT.com. Can gossip make you sick? Ahead in the next hour of GMSA, why gossiping can be more than just harmless water cooler chatter and what experts say it could actually be doing to your body. Trans guide right now, taking a look at uh, some flashing lights there at 281 and winding way. The hazards are on, and we've still got this incident at 35 at Cesar Chavez that we've been uh, monitoring since we went on the air this morning. Stephen Cavazos will have a live update coming up. A woman is dead this morning after a rollover crash just west of downtown. We're going to tell you everything we know so far. Lots of questions this morning after an overnight house fire on the east side of town. Why police are getting involved in the investigation just ahead. This morning, ABC News projects Republicans have gained a slim House majority with Democrats narrowly holding the Senate. I'm ABC's Justin Finch with reaction from the president to this divided Congress. And taking a look out there with a live cam, still chilly. We're at 46 degrees, uh, not as cold as yesterday, but you still need that jacket. Live from Case at 12, Good Morning San Antonio starts right now. And good morning to you. It is Thursday, November 17th. Thanks for starting your morning with us. Welcome back. Mark. Thank you. Been under the weather all week long. It's been rough, but here I am. Glad you're feeling better. Thank you. And uh, you have the nice cold weather still to enjoy. Yeah, I uh, wanted to stay under the covers every day for the last <laughs> four or five days, Mike Osterhage. It looks like that trend's going to continue for the rest of the week and into the weekend. Yeah, all of us have wanted to just uh, kind of throw the covers back over your head, especially on Saturday, because it's going to be one of those days where, yeah, you just don't want to go outside on Saturday. This morning, yep, we all have to head off to work and school. The road is uh, fairly dry over there by the airport, but as you can see, we do have a few light little showers around the area. Going down here to the, the southeast, you may run into a couple of them heading down to 37 there just to the south of Pleasanton, Floresville. A couple of showers just moved on through right around Kennedy, Quero, and then here in town. We've been watching this kind of the, the one little line of rain move in from Medina County, and it's now there in southern Bear County. Just there were a few showers right there along 410 and just about 37. And then as you head down 35 in toward Lytle and further on down by Divine, you're going to run into just a couple of these light showers. Not much of anything, just enough to make the roads sort of damp, and that continues over there and in southern Medina and southern Uvalde counties. A few more of these showers. Just, again, very light stuff up there in portions of the hill country. It'll be sticking around for the next couple of hours. Temperatures are in the mid to low 40s. Uh, 48, though, a little bit warmer down around Stinson as well as Pleasanton. Then 30s up in portions of the hill country. Mold is on the low side. The updated count is going to come out in about an hour, hour and a half. Temperatures, we may fluctuate another a couple of notches here. The the cloud cover is helping to keep things. It's, that's acting like the blanket over us, keeping us not from getting as cool as what we could get. And then we are going to continue to warm up, see a little more sunshine by late in the morning, 55 at noon. And then we go into later on today, 59 for a high temperature, about where we've been the past couple of days. And that's still 10, 15 degrees below normal, and that is going to be the case again tomorrow. Then talk about below normal temperatures is going to be really cold on Saturday. We warm up though as we head in toward Thanksgiving. We'll take a look ahead way down the road toward Turkey Day in just a couple of minutes. Traffic Authority, Stephen Cavasso, still got the big incident on the uh, yep. near south side, right? Yes, and unfortunately, this is one of those times where uh, we have an incident like this. It could cause an issue with traffic. Now, unfortunately, those details are grim. We do know at least one person died from their injuries. Another was taken to the hospital, but uh, this is actually an investigation is what we're looking at from this trans guide camera. You can can see some of those flashing lights out there actually have closed off that exit ramp toward Frio Street. So if you are driving down I-35 South, you may have seen those. You may see those overhead signs that show that there is an accident that is led to this particular area to be shut down. So thankfully it's not impacting a whole lot of traffic. But as I mentioned, it's 6 a.m. So things are going to change here pretty quickly. Uh, you see there in the southbound lanes is where it's been pinpointed, but no buildup just yet. It's very early. But something you have to be on the lookout for. Uh, we mentioned that this has been an ongoing investigation for several hours where we know deputies, Bear County deputies, that is also had to come out on the scene. And we also have our Katrina Weber there who's been live throughout the morning. Katrina, what is the very latest at 6 a.m.? 
Well, good morning. We just spoke with the sheriff just a few minutes ago, and he updated us on things. He says that uh, investigators are working to finish as quickly as possible up on the highway so that they can reopen this ramp, 35 South, near Frio. Uh, this scene, though, he says, could remain here for quite some time because this is where the car landed. We still have that car here at the scene. Now, this crash happened after 2.30 this morning. According to the sheriff, a deputy spotted this car going about 40 miles per hour on the highway radioed or talk, spoke over the loudspeaker telling the driver to pull off the highway because he was in a dangerous area. Now, the driver appeared to be pulling over, but then, according to the sheriff, he started speeding up, took this ramp, which is sort of a roundabout, and that's where he lost control, came off the highway and landed on the street below. There was a passenger in the car who was killed. The driver, a 19-year-old man, was taken to the hospital. The sheriff did tell us just uh, just now that they have drawn blood from that driver at the hospital, and they're going to analyze it to see if he was intoxicated. He says that that man also had outstanding warrants from another city in the state, and he was in possession of a firearm. And he says that they searched the car, and they did find uh, some checkbooks that did not appear to belong to this driver or anyone in the car. So... Uh, they are trying to investigate and see what the story is with those. But again, the passenger killed. They're not sure at this point of the gender or the age of that passenger. But the driver, a 19-year-old in the hospital, possibly uh, facing charges. And according to the sheriff, he did suffer some serious injuries as well. So their investigation here on the ground continues. But again, the sheriff says that they're working as quickly as possible to try to wrap things up on the highway so they can reopen this ramp. Reporting live downtown, Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News. Thank you, Katrina. New this morning, a home under construction is now completely destroyed after an overnight fire on the east side of town. This happened around 10 last night on Aransas Avenue and South New Braunfels. Crews had their hands full with the flames, but they were able to get them put out. While it's still not clear what sparked this fire, police tell us they found gas rags and matches in the area, and they're talking to a woman who was hiding behind a nearby building at the time of the fire. More than a week after the midterms, the balance of power on Capitol Hill is taking shape with new election results now in. ABC's news projects Republicans will hold a slim majority in the House with Democrats gaining control of the Senate. ABC's Justin Finch has more. Good morning. The White House has been bracing for a divided Congress, releasing a statement from President Biden saying the future is too promising to be trapped in political warfare and that the president is willing to work with anyone to deliver results for the American people. After cementing a slim House majority, House leader Kevin McCarthy appeared on Fox, reacting to Republicans retaking control of the chamber. It is official. One party Democrat rule in Washington is finished. We have fired Nancy Pelosi. McCarthy has also won his party's nomination for House Speaker and received congratulations from President Biden. The president saying in a statement he's ready to work with House Republicans to deliver results for working families. Democrats will retain control of the Senate, but the GOP win in the House falls far short of the red wave they hoped for, prompting finger pointing about what went wrong. Former Trump Secretary of State Mike Pompeo agreeing, tweeting, we need more seriousness, less noise, and leaders who are looking forward, not staring in the rearview mirror claiming victimhood. And with the power balance on Capitol Hill now appearing set, all eyes are on current House Speaker Nancy Pelosi and what she will do next. The Speaker is set to announce those plans later today. Justin Finch, ABC News, Washington. Back here at home, our San Antonio Missions under new local ownership that includes some heavy hitters, Hall of Famers in both baseball and basketball, and talk of a brand new stadium. The deal closed this week for a reported $28 million. It's after City Council voted last week to transfer the lease, lease at Wolf Stadium to this new local ownership group. So who are they? Well, the new ownership includes Peter J. Holt as chair, Baseball Hall of Famer Nolan Ryan, and Basketball Hall of Famers David Robinson and Madhu Ginobili. It'll be a press conference this morning at 10 a.m. behind home plate at Wolf Stadium to introduce the new owners. Fans are encouraged to be there.
In your morning consumer news, shoppers are still shopping despite higher prices for just about everything. Retail sales in October jumping 1.3% after remaining unchanged the month before. The Commerce Department seeing increases in sales of everything from food and gasoline to cars and furniture. Retail giant Target has seen some pullbacks among its shoppers in the last couple of weeks. The company has lowered its financial goals for the holiday season, and Target sales in the most recent quarter missed expectations. Spending a day at Disney will cost you more soon. Prices for tickets are expected to go up starting early next month. And prices will be based on which park you visit and when you go. The most expensive, a one-day ticket at Magic Kingdom around Christmas, $189. Airbnb looking to expand its listings with features aimed at attracting new hosts. The company increasing the amount of liability coverage for hosts up to $3 million. It's also offering to pair newbies with more experienced hosts who can show them the ropes. Apple's launched an updated version of its iCloud.com with a brand new design. It allows users quick access to apps like Photos, iCloud Drive, Notes, and Reminders. That access comes through widgets, which are replacing the old icons. Samsung expanding its game streaming to more devices. The company is making its cloud gaming compatible to with older TVs. Users will get the full gaming hub with certain models. Others will only get individual gaming apps. Time now, 610 and 46 degrees for now. Much more to come on GMSA, including the dramatic body cam video from Kansas. Shows police pulling a woman from a burning SUV. That's coming up a little bit later. And a winter blast is set to tighten its grip on parts of the U.S. We're going to tell you when and where after the break. And if you're thinking that's going to affect our weather here in South Texas, your hunch is correct. We'll take a look at the extended forecast, including what could happen this weekend here in South Texas with Mike Osterhage coming up. Time check just before 615. Let's get a quick look at the commute around town because thankfully we're really not seeing a whole lot of problems out there. 10 at the Y, there are 35 southbound at Maine. You can see both lower and upper levels. Traffic's picking up already. It's 16 to 4 at FM 78 is thankfully pretty much really quiet out there. But the big problem does remain in one of those spots that we are probably going to see a slowdown in the next few minutes. And that's really going to be right over here along I-35 southbound there at Cesar Chavez Boulevard. We just talked to Katrina Weber earlier on the scene, and she's actually reporting that this was a pretty serious crash where we know at least one person died from their injuries, another taken to the hospital. Now, those flashing lights that you see out there uh, are part of an investigation that is taking place. Uh, those details, again, are still coming into our newsroom. We will hear from Katrina Weber again at our next half hour of GMSA. But right now, that exit also, you see, is Frio, and it's blocked off as we do have deputies there on the scene. And, of course, we know that this could be taking a little while to clear up there, so we have to make sure we watch out for those first responders. 35 Southbound at Maine is where it's been reported uh, by TxDOT, but again, that exit at Frio Street is closed as the investigation does take place, but we'll keep a close eye on it throughout the morning. Thankfully, everywhere else, it has been nice and quiet, and we hope that it stays that way because we are approaching morning rush, but as if you are going to be heading into San Antonio, I wouldn't say you need a rush if you're coming in from any of these communities. Things have been pretty pleasant. 28 minutes coming in from Pleasanton, 30 minutes, usual time from Highway 90 and that arrival from Lido looks to be about the usual time 16 minutes at this point. But let's get back here on Trans Guide. We'll keep a close eye on this, but Katrina Weber has been boots on the ground. She's been giving <coughs> us a look at this, these conditions. We know that a black Mustang was actually traveling through the area and actually went over the barrier and rolled over. So a very serious crash and we'll have a full live report coming up again a little bit later on, guys. Thank you, Stephen. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Uh, bundle up for that yeah. bus stop. Yeah, because it's just that bone chilling kind of cold out there. Temperatures once again are not as cold as what they've been earlier in the week, but we will drop down a couple of more notches. We're in the mid 40s right now. We'll uh, end up in the low 40s, so we're still going to be anywhere from 5 to 10 degrees below normal. Couple sprinkles out there and then a high temperature today of 59. So some sunshine. Enjoy it. Is it not going to be much for the next four, five, six days at least going into the middle of next week. All right, here's a couple of guys that are bundled up for it, <laughs> and the names are best, Rufus and Munchkin. Oh, Aww, how cute. So Christmas cute. sweaters. Does he look happy? Mm, yes. He's smoldering. That's what we said. <laughs> He's smoldering. There you go. <laughs> yeah. 
smolder. <laughs> Mark's missed all the smoldering talk the past couple yeah. of days. Oh, with some of the, fill of it. <laughs> some, of the, some of the young bucks growing the beards there, they have their smoldering pictures. Yeah. So. <laughs> I, uh, uh, we've got trust some, me, I've noticed. <laughs> we've got some, cl some clouds hanging out here right now. And uh, as you can see, more of these light showers are developing. We've had a few right here on the, uh, the south side of Bear County, right there around 410, 35. And now coming into the, the west side, uh, just about just to the north of uh, 90, heading in towards SeaWorld, maybe in around uh, Halotus as well. And then more of these light little showers, obviously through Medina County, up into portions of the uh, hill country, and then further on down to the southeast. So we'll see a few more of them around this morning, but it's not going to mount to anything, just enough to make the roads damp and a little slippery. 46 right now in town, 40 Balverde, 41 Bernie Stage, uh, some 38s out there in parts of the hill country. And throughout the rest of the morning, we're going to continue with the light little sprinkly showers, and that's going to be through the rest of the morning commute. If indeed they do pop up, they will be very few and far between. Then we go into uh, morning, late morning hours, more sunshine mixed in and more later on this afternoon, mid fifties at noon. Like I said, we top off at 59 later on today. Normal high temperatures still 71. So we are still part of this huge Arctic air mass that came down from Canada, covering most of the country. We've got a lot of clouds hanging around here right now. And that's the moisture coming in from the Pacific Ocean. But you look up there to the north of us and all of that snow, that huge rotation around there. And so we've got snow coming into the northern plains. But then in the Great Lakes area, this is what notice how it just forms up right there as this loops back on through right on the lee of all of the Great Lakes, the good old fashioned lake effect snow up there. And that is what's measured in feet up to the north. We're going to have more on that in just a moment for us. We are going to be up to the mid 50s today at noon, partly cloudy skies. High temperature makes it up to 59. Enjoy the sunshine today because you look at the next seven days and there's not going to be a lot of sunshine. Tomorrow we're going to have a lot of clouds around here, a couple of sprinkles in the morning, and then we will see a little bit better chance for rain in the afternoon tomorrow night, especially then on Saturday. And we've got a front moving through, so that keeps us only in the mid 40s at best. A lot of clouds into next week and then we warm up toward the middle part of next week and about mid 70s on Thanksgiving. I remember these days very well living up in Michigan with one week to go before Thanksgiving. A good chunk of the country is bracing for some fierce winter like weather, especially in and around the Great Lakes, parts of the Northeast. And this is on the lee of the lakes like around Buffalo. Believe it or not, I could see four feet of snow by the weekend. Even people in the deep south are bracing for bitter winter cold. ABC's Andrea Fuji has more. This morning, a winter blast is about to tighten its grip on much of the U.S. Heavy snow already blamed for power outages in parts of Michigan and Indiana. And today, a state of emergency is expected to be declared in New York. Travel will be near impossible uh, during the height of the storm. The plows are on standby as parts of upstate New York and northeast Ohio brace for snowfall rates of three inches per hour. One official calling it a very, very significant event. Mentally, I got the manpower ready, but um, as far as, you know, actually being ready for it, I don't think anybody's ever ready for the first storm in Buffalo. A lake effect snow warning is in effect into the weekend. Bitter cold air sweeping across above average lake water temperatures is expected to trigger massive snowfall totals, up to four feet predicted in the Buffalo area. Public schools already announcing they'll be closed tomorrow. It is very rare to see the Weather Service uh, call for extreme impacts, uh, which basically in some ways is the shutdown of the community while this event is going on. It all comes almost exactly eight years after an epic lake effect event dumped more than five feet of snow in the region, killing 13 people. The Northeast isn't the only region feeling this winter chill. Below freezing wind chills will be extending deep into the deep south. Back in Michigan last night, a preview of things to come at the Western Michigan versus Central Michigan football game. Players were dashing through the snow, even doing snow angels to celebrate a sack. Bulldozers had to be used to clear the field. For football fans this weekend, the big question is, will the Buffalo Bills be able to host the Cleveland Browns this Sunday? For now, the game is on, but the NFL says they will continue to monitor the conditions. Andrea Fuji, ABC News, New York.
621, 46 degrees. The Spurs have been having a tough time on the West Coast, having dropped their last two games. They have a chance to rebound tonight. We're going to have a preview. This is how it feels to do more with less asthma, thanks to Dupixent. Dupixent is not for sudden breathing problems. It's an add-on treatment for specific types of moderate to severe asthma and can help improve lung function for better breathing. In as little as two weeks, Dupixent helps prevent asthma attacks and can even reduce or eliminate oral steroids. Imagine that. Dupixent can cause allergic reactions that can be severe. Get help right away if you have rash, chest pain, worsening shortness of breath, tingling, or numbness in your limbs. Tell your doctor about new or worsening joint aches and pain or a parasitic infection. Don't change or stop asthma medicines, including steroids, without talking to your doctor. Who knows what you can do when you do more with less asthma? Ask your asthma specialist about Dupixent. San Antonio Spurs continue their West Coast road trip tonight in Sacramento. Right now, the Spurs are in a slump, having lost the past two games versus Golden State and Portland. They'll try to rebound against the Kings. It's a late game, so if you want to watch it, you'll need to stay up late. Tip-off is set for 9 p.m. our time tonight. We have all the highlights for you tomorrow on GMSA. And time now, 625 and 46 degrees for now. Still ahead on GMSA, a woman is dead this morning after an early morning rollover crash that happened just west of downtown. What police are saying led up to that crash just ahead. And we still have flashing lights. We've been watching this incident all morning long. A fatality accident's got part of, uh, affected part of 35 at Cesar Chavez. Stephen will have an update uh, right here on GMSA. We'll be right back. Things turned deadly downtown in a situation involving a driver trying to get away from a sheriff's deputy. Good morning, I'm Katrina Weber. I'll tell you what the sheriff suspects is the reason he ran. Coming up. A dramatic rescue all caught on tape. We're going to show you the moment police officers in Kansas pull a woman from a burning SUV. Outside with live cam, mid 40s here in town, chilly. Where do you see the weekend, whether it's Calder or Clam Chowder? You're going to want to plan ahead. And good morning, everybody. It is Thursday, November 17th. Thanks for joining us. Yes, it's been a cold week so far, but we're looking forward to even colder temperatures this weekend. Yeah, if you love damp, gray, chilly, this is yeah. your weekend. <laughs> I like that when you mention the different, like a flight of soups. Oh, a flight that of soups. That sounds awesome. Yes. Wouldn't that be fantastic? Yeah. Especially in the morning hours. Ooh, that sounds really good. Okay, more on that coming up in a moment. We'll work on that. But uh, we've got a lot of clouds hanging around here right now. Now and temperatures are definitely on the chi chilly side. Speaking of soups and chili and everything like that, 46 degrees. Oatmeal sounds really good this morning. Dew point stands at 32, and we've got a little bit of a breeze there out of the northwest at six miles per hour. So yes, some humidity. But what's really holding temperatures up this morning is the fact it's dry enough to where we could continue to drop down. But of course, we've got that cloud cover out there. All right, here's what it looks like on radar right now. And I've been watching these few little light showers and especially the ones coming in here from the west. And right down here in the southern portion of Bear County, we've got a couple of showers going right across, right up 35, I should say, from uh, Lytle in toward the interchange with 410. And they're right around Mitchell Lake. Now, a couple of more showers are moving in toward SeaWorld, Leon Valley, 410 over here as you get in toward Bandera Road, and then a few more off to the uh, north and to the northeast right there by the airport. The interchange with 281, 410 over there, so it's going to start getting a little bit on the uh, the damp side, and then even a couple more heading out 10 off to the northeast side, and maybe a few of them out there. It looks like a couple maybe showing up there, 1604 over on the far northeast side of town. Temperatures have been pretty steady for the past couple of hours. Again, and thanks to that cloud cover, that nice blanket on top of us. Mold is on the light side and throughout the rest of today. We are going to be seeing a little more sunshine later on this afternoon. Temperatures will just barely make it up into the mid 50s by noon and then more sunshine this afternoon. Enjoy this because that's going to be the last we see of any abundant sunshine, if at all, for 
the next week. 59 for high temperature today. We'll see how cold it's going to be this weekend. It's going to be one of those raw days on Saturday and a sneak peek ahead way down the road in toward Thanksgiving. Traffic Authority, Stephen, still got big problems there, right? Yeah, Mike, we were hoping that this would clear out, but unfortunately, we are still seeing some of the issues we saw around 430 this morning. Wider look at Transguide does show that we have that in active investigation taking place here above 35 at Cesar Chavez, but notice that that exit at Fria Street still is blocked off. We know deputies have been out there for quite a while. We're going to hear from Katrina Weber in just a moment, but just be on the lookout for this. We venture that last half hour of 6 a.m. and that's when things really start to ramp up on the roadways, but I don't even need to tell you that we can see it on Transguide. A lot more folks making their way out there this morning. Keep in mind, this is in the downtown area, southbound lanes. We see it right there to you on the map. We are seeing a little bit of a buildup that's taking place as you're approaching 35 South, but it's it's nothing too major yet. So if you do have to head out there, you know, you see the trans guide signs that have the alert. There is a crash. Maybe look for an alternative route if you can before it does uh, get a little bit bad out there, but hopefully we'll see an investigation wrap up a little bit later this morning. 35 southbound at loop 1604. Another crash also reported this time. We are seeing a little bit of a buildup. You can see it right there behind me. A little orange as you approach 1604. So be on the lookout for that. I'll get our friends at Transguide on the phone and find out exactly if we can get a shot of the conditions out there. But the wide look at the map does really show that it's going to be uh, just some active road closures to be on the lookout for. But the big headline on the roads has been this crash here along 35 at Caesar Chavez, a pretty nasty one. And that's where we find our Katrina Weber, who has been live throughout the morning. Katrina, what's the latest? Well, good morning. It appears that deputies still have a lot to learn about this crash, although the sheriff did share quite a bit of information with us. He, t he told us that uh, the driver apparently was trying to get away from a deputy when he crashed, killing his passenger. And this is the scene right here behind me. Now, that car uh, that is in the middle of this scene down here on the street actually started out up on the highway. According to the sheriff, uh, the deputy spotted the car going about 40 miles an hour after 2.30 this morning. He tried to get the driver to pull off the highway. Instead, the driver took off and then took the ramp at Frio and Cesar Chavez. He uh, lost control of the car. It came off the highway, landed here on the ground below. And again, the passenger in that car was killed. The sheriff tells us it's a 19 year old man who was driving. He's in the hospital with some serious injuries, but also possibly facing some serious charges. According to the sheriff, they have drawn blood from him to try to determine if he was intoxicated. They say that man also had outstanding warrants and was in possession of a weapon as well as some checks in the car that didn't seem to belong to anyone in that vehicle. So that's a whole other investigation that they will be uh, looking into. But for now, their focus is on this crash scene. They've been up on the highway and also down below uh, checking out the damage to the highway, checking out what has, has happened on the ground below. Now, curiously enough, the sheriff told us that uh, some of that damage is from another crash that happened recently with a similar outcome, another apparently another fatal crash because there was a memorial set up on the sidewalk below. And when this car came off the highway this morning, it actually hit that memorial. But uh, again, they do have the driver in the hospital right now. The sheriff says he's being evaluated for possible intoxication and definitely facing some charges. Reporting live downtown, Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News. Katrina, thank you. Lots of questions this morning after a teenager was shot while walking through his apartment complex. It happened around one this morning on East South Cross near Club View on the city's southeast side. Police say someone in a car drove by and started shooting at the teen, hitting him in the leg. He was taken to the hospital. This time, police have not had any arrests. We'll look for updates on this story, both on air and online. An update on a deadly crash that happened on San Antonio's east side. San Antonio police say a man killed yesterday was a stowaway on the top the cab of an 18 wheeler. This was on Rigsby near Bermuda on the east side. Police and the man climbed down from the cab when the truck driver stopped at a red light. Investigators say the truck then moved forward, the light turned green, and unknowingly ran over the man. Overnight, some small quakes felt across West Texas. This comes after the big one being felt even here in San Antonio. Experts say we felt it here because of the size and the geology of the landscape. That quake coming in a 5.4 yesterday, third strongest in state history. The uh, epicenter was near Menton, Texas, with tremors stretching about 
350 miles. University health officials explain they evacuated the Robert B. Green building near downtown and the staff wouldn't be back until an engineer checked the structure of the building. It was also fell to some buildings at San Antonio College downtown. Here at the Moody Learning Center, there were some reports of definite uh, feelings of jolting on the fifth floor and just above two floors up on the seventh floor the top floor there were some reports from people of furniture actually moving and scientists say earthquakes in west texas are becoming more common this morning uvalde cisd has a new interim police chief this nearly three months after pete adadondo was fired by the school board and a month after the entire police force was suspended Last night's school board meeting was the first held by Gary Patterson, the interim superintendent. Lee Waldman spoke with the community members who say they are feeling hopeful. We can begin to understand what the families and the community have gone through. I want you to know I'm trying. In his first meeting, Gary Patterson, the interim superintendent, appealed to the room, offering his condolences and vowing to do more for the 21 families and the rest of the district, starting with the police department and safety. My eyes are wide open to the scrutiny of our district police department. And I'm fully aware, and our board is fully aware how careful we must be uh, to make sure we're taking the right steps. The board voted unanimously to approve Josh Gutierrez as the interim police chief, with J.J. Suarez is abstaining. Patterson has worked with Gutierrez in two other districts. He comes with a long list of credentials with law enforcement and education. One of the things that is very impressive about Josh is he decided after a few years in law enforcement, he decided to go back to school. He received a teacher certification and a principal certification. Gutierrez met with community members, including Gladys and Caitlin Gonzalez. Caitlin has become an advocate for safety. He looks tough. Do you think he can do the job? Uh, if he's manly enough. The background, uh, work ethic, experience, I, th I feel that he is going to be able to fulfill the duty. So it's just a matter of time before we can see the outcome. We asked Gutierrez for a comment Wednesday night. He didn't give one. Looking more into his background, he spent time at East Central and Lavernia ISDs. The district voted to approve the location and conceptual design for a new elementary school that will replace Rob Elementary. In Uvalde, Lee Waldman for GMSA. And caught on camera, a dramatic rescue in Leewood, Kansas. Body camera video shows a moment where police officers were able to pull a woman from a burning SUV. Now she was actually trapped under the vehicle and the flames. The woman was taken to the hospital and we were told she is doing okay. Back here at home, No Shave November continues. Yeah, it does, it does. We still have a few days left, a few weeks left, so we'll see how things kind of just grow in. But for now, <laughs> uh, everyone is looking pretty scruffy. Aside from Steph, Steph looks Perfect as always, you know, but uh, it, it's all for good cause. We talk about it, you know, each and every year, but uh, this is a special month for a lot of guys at KSAT because cancer impacts everyone differently. And now we're going to hear from our very own David Sears. Hi, I'm David Sears, and the reason I'm taking part in No Shave November is, number one, my father-in-law passed away several years ago from a very rare blood cancer, so I'm doing it in honor of him. And number two, I'm doing it to remind you to get tested. If you're around my age, you probably remember the band Duran Duran just found out a couple of days ago that one of their ex-bandmates has prostate cancer, stage four. Get tested. Take care of yourself. That's why we're doing this to remind you and ladies, you can always remind your men, yeah, those colonoscopy thing is nasty, but it's worth it. Get tested, take care of yourself, and let it grow. <laughs> yeah, let it grow, David. All right, thank you for sharing that story. And here's another look at our leaderboard. Things have stayed the same since we last showed you in the last hour or so. Obviously, same guys are still at the top. Mike Osterhage, Mark Austin, myself, Jonathan Cotto, and David Sears. And we were talking about this earlier, Mark, because I know you've been out, but the guys, I mean, you've seen the chat, a lot of these smolders that we're starting to see. So I don't know. I mean, can you give us a good smolder? 
Uh, on on demand, no. I know. It's, it's, it's like, hard. It requires, uh, from, and I've seen the chat, it requires work. <laughs> Light. It requires Light. lighting. Lighting. have a lot of that here. Creative camera angles. So, yes. And uh, uh, just, like, just the environment in general. There yes. are guys worried about these shots that I never thought would be worried about their selfies. But, yes, but, you know, I also do have to say, this is probably the most competitive uh, I've seen it in a while. Our group chat is a fun group chat with the guys. Yeah, so it is. Uh, of course, you can scan this QR code. We're bringing it up right now. And that will take you to our KSAT traffic page. There it is. Thank you, guys. All right. So scan that QR code. Uh, I said KSAT traffic. I got another one for that, too. But <laughs> KSAT.com slash no shave. Scan that yeah. QR code. It'll take you to our page. Find out how you can donate to our team as a whole or any of our guys here. We've raised close to 10000 so we're still a little bit close, uh, a, way, a ways off. We're trying to raise 20000 So, hey, go scan that QR code and, and donate. And, again, special shout-out to our GMSA viewers for keeping us uh, three at the top. Yes. And, of course, every donation counts because it helps toward a bigger cause, cancer research, treatment, it, and prevention. It does. And we know money's tight, folks. Yeah. We get yeah. it. But every little bit helps us, and we do have some time left, so we, we would appreciate it. Yeah, thank so and an extra thank you to the GMSA voters. Yes. Put you guys in hey, the lead. Thank you guys. That's yeah, right. Appreciate it. Time right now, 642, 46 degrees. And still ahead on GMSA, why gossiping could be more than just harmless water cooler chatter. And what experts say it could actually be doing to your body. Well, welcome back. We all know that gossip can be toxic for relationships, but you should also know that it can be harmful to your health. RJ Marquez has the details. Time sit there. Research shows that more than 70% of our daily conversations revolve around talking about somebody else. You'll never guess what I know. Okay. Gossiping can take a toll on your health. When adrenaline spikes, so does cortisol, which is a stress hormone, and both of these increase when we retell painful stories of being hurt or wronged by someone. Your cortisol goes up, which means your fuel consumption goes up. So what happens, you actually fired up your body. So anytime you go into the mode of gossiping or speaking negative about people, you've actually now fired up your fight or flight physiology. Over time, your body can stay in that fight or flight mode, which can make you feel helpless, angry, and anxious. And that can lead to survival mode where you gossip about others to make you feel better about yourself. Experts say it's a vicious cycle that can eventually make you sick. Your immune system starts attacking your own tissues. Your metabolism or fuel consumption starts taking fuel from your tendons and ligaments and cartilage, actually your brain. Gossiping can also bring on exhaustion, anxiety, or depression. So how do you break the cycle? Simply stopping negativity in your conversations can have a dramatic impact on how your body reacts. In fact, positive gossip, like sharing news about someone's accomplishments, can temporarily boost your own self-esteem and may help us all feel more emotionally supported by others. And experts say the key to all of this is balance. Set a gossip time limit, stick to the 10-minute rule, and then kindly bow out of the conversation. RJ Marquez, KSAT 12 News. All right, thank you, RJ. Uh, more problems out on the roadway as you get the commute going here. State Highway 151 at Loop 410 East. Not a good situation. We see plenty of flashing lights out there, and you can notice it right behind me. This doesn't look like it's really impacting a whole lot of traffic from this shot at Transguide, but let's check out our map because it's a different story. We have a lot of slowdowns that we're starting to see now. I-35 South, and we're going to start here. This has been the big headline of the morning, that serious crash where we know, unfortunately, one person died, another taken to the hospital. We still see the active investigation taking place. Freya Street looks like it's still closed off at this time, guys, so if you can look for an alternative route, slow down again as expected when that investigation is ongoing. Now I want to take you a little bit further down here. We did see that there was an incident taking place off of I-35 southbound at loop 1604. A little bit of slowdown due to a crash, but that may have already cleared out. So some better news to report now up to that big problem that we saw on Transguide State Highway 151 eastbound at Loop 410. That crash also being reported. So wide look at the map does show. Yeah, it's getting busy out there. Make sure to plan your commute ahead of time. I know that's a lot of information, but you need to be prepared whenever you see those flashing lights. Remember, move over or slow down. Mike. Thank you, sir. And uh, here's live cam over there by the airport, and it almost looks like there may be a little bit of dampness on the roads. Justin Horn uh, just came in and said that his drive into work, he saw very, very light sprinkles, but a couple of sprinkles, and that's what we're seeing in and around town. So big picture, more rain off to the east from uh, Floresville, straight off to the east near Victoria. And then we're starting to see this batch kind of fill in a little bit more right here in southern Medina County and maybe 
slightly more than just a sprinkle there. And then you move in closer in toward Bear County and coming right up 35 in toward the southern side of uh, the city over toward Elmendorf and then over by SeaWorld. We got a couple of more of these showers over there 1604 and then moving in toward Leon Valley right there along 410. And it also looks like, well, we did have even just a couple of these uh, sprinkly showers right here that moved on through the airport area on 410. So the road may be kind of damp out there, although one thing, even though a lot of this is showing up on radar right now, we still have fairly dry air. So some of this may not actually be reaching the ground, but just don't be surprised if there are a couple of uh, sprinkly showers out there. So here's what it looks like on the uh, computer model. We will keep a few more of these showers around throughout the rest of the morning. Then we start to see the clouds break up somewhat, and we're going to have more sunshine later on this afternoon. Then clouds going to move back in overnight. More sprinkles around here. A couple of light showers tomorrow morning more kind of filling in throughout the evening hours, late afternoon, evening hours. Then we go into Saturday and that's when the rain really starts to uh, kind of move on in here. Here's a different computer model. This just kind of picks up where the other one left off throughout the day on Saturday. We are going to have showers around here and with the front moving on through, that's going to keep temperatures on the I don't want to say chilly side, just on the plain old cold side. Plus, given the fact that we've got the rain out there and cloudy skies, obviously, it's going to be one of those days where you just want to hunker down inside. It's 55 degrees today at noon, partly cloudy skies. High temperatures going to make it up to 59 with some sunshine. Enjoy the sunshine today because look at the next few days going all the way in through almost the entire middle of next week. Nothing but clouds out there and we've got the front moving through. That's going to be early late Friday, early Saturday. So that holds temperatures only at 44 degrees and that may be generous and then we'll barely make it above 50 on Sunday. A couple little sprinkles there. Slightly better shot at some rain Monday, lingering into Tuesday and some sunshine. Notice how things do warm up going into the middle part of next week. And as of right now, it does look like we'll be in the uh, 70 degree range for Thanksgiving around here. Steph, Mark. Thank you very much, Mike. Right now, 651, 46 degrees. The Salvation Army's 2022 Angel Trees have arrived at local malls and area Walmarts. I'm Sarah Costa. Coming up tomorrow on GMSA, hear about how you can help out local children this Christmas and what it takes to donate. And let's look out there with live cam. We're at 46 degrees. The sun is out, but it's still chilly out there. Grab a jacket and we'll be right back. Time check now 655. Let's get another look here at this active investigation along 35 at Cesar Chavez. Keep in mind, Frio Street is still blocked off. We do have deputies that have been out there for now several hours. Katrina Weber has been bringing us information throughout the morning. Very serious crash, and we're also starting to see that slowdown. Also spotting a slowdown over here along State Highway 151 eastbound on the Transguide cameras. And right now, as we give you a wide look at the map, it does look like we will start to see that more so now that we have entered morning rush hour. So just remember to drive safe, but we'll have more updates throughout Good Morning America. Thank you, sir. Most of the roads, uh, at least in this picture and the one you just showed, Stephen, look to be dry. There were a couple of sprinkles showing up on radar over there by the airport earlier. Some may be evaporating, but we'll continue with some of these light uh, sprinkles, light showers around throughout the rest of the morning. Temperatures right now just in the 40s, 30s in the hill country and some sunshine today, 59. But then it is going to be cold and wet, especially this weekend. All right. Urgh. Enjoy the sun today and we'll see you back here at nine. Have a great day. GMA is next.